Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome everyone to this worship for Easter Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and his promise of life and hope for all people. Let us pray. Gracious God, you loved this world so much that you gave your son so that we might be called your children. Help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let our hearts be full of thankfulness for your gift to us. Forgive us for the times when our lives do not speak of your transforming grace, your hope and your love. And help us to walk in that mighty grace, telling your good news to the world. In the name of our risen Lord we pray. Amen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. 
In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Why was the Easter Bunny so sad? Because he was having a bad hair day. What kind of jewellery is the best Easter gift? A 14 carat necklace. How does the Easter Bunny stay fit? Aerobics. I wonder if you knew that in the Middle Ages it was an Easter tradition on Easter Sunday to tell a joke during the sermon. It was called the Rices Pascalis, the Easter laugh. And it was supposed to remind us how God had tricked everyone and given us the last laugh over death. Of course, the medieval jokes turned to pranks and all got too rowdy and too much until in the 17th century, Pope Clement X outlawed the Rices Pascalis. It's very easy to miss the point of Easter. There are lots of things that can distract us from that real meaning. The Easter bunny, chicks, rabbits, all of that stuff, chocolate eggs, whatever it might be. The truth of Easter is seen early one morning when a group of women come to a tomb. They're trying to come to terms with everything that had happened, with the cross, the tomb. They're frightened. They don't know what to do. They're still wondering if it's all real. Did it all happen? How can everything have gone so bad so quickly? Only a week ago, Jesus was welcomed like a hero, the long lost king returning to his city. And now here they are walking towards a cold tomb to anoint his dead, executed body. The day starts in desperation, desolation and death. And then suddenly all things are changed. The stone is moved, the tomb is empty, the Lord is risen, and their lives will never be the same. That first Easter was a day that could transform any life. There are moments early that Easter morning that echo through history, still to us here in our time. And there are parts of that great story that um, connect to different people at different times. But there is a wonderful part, a question in Luke's version, which is always one of my favourite moments. The angels ask, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but has risen. It's easy to look in the wrong places, easy to focus on the wrong things. What are you doing here? Ask the angels. Looking for life in the wrong places. Looking for hope and love in the wrong place. What are you doing here? This place has no more power. It's finished. It is no longer needed. The Lord isn't here among the dead. He is among the living where you must be too. The call of Easter morning is to leave the place of the dead with a living risen Christ to transform the world of the living. So three things, three thoughts for us today. Firstly, what are you doing here? The battle is won. Early on that Easter Sunday morning, the women come to the tomb. 
As God's Son had hung on the cross, it appeared as though sin and death had won. It appeared as if good had been defeated, that God was beaten, that evil had triumphed. But the empty tomb yells, no! Jesus has been raised. Sin is defeated. God is victorious. Victorious over evil, over sin. Victorious even over death itself. But of course, Easter Day doesn't make death unimportant. Easter Day doesn't mean that death is nothing at all in that unfortunate line from Henry Scott Holland's poem. But Easter declares victory over death. The empty tomb shows us that the grave is not a prison from which there is no escape. The empty tomb confirms that Jesus has come through death into new life and his promise to you and to me is that we too can know that life. The battle is won. All ye that seek the Lord who died, your God for sinners crucified, now let all your grief be o'er. Believe and you shall weep no more. The battle is won and an empty tomb proclaims it to the world. So don't come to the place of the dead looking for him because Jesus will never be here. Never again. The battle is won. And then secondly, what are you doing here? The truth is known. The women come to the tomb, they see, they listen, they remember. Peter comes and of course he doesn't believe what he's told. He looks, he finds no body, he tries to make some sense of everything that's going on. And it's easy to kind of feel for Peter in this. But we read that he, once he'd seen the empty tomb, he went away wondering to himself about what had happened. You see, the key to understanding this moment properly is the word wondering. It's the Greek word thaumadzu, which means to wonder. It appears 43 times in the New Testament, and only here is it translated as wondering. In all the other places, it's translated as uh, to admire, to have in admiration, to marvel at, to wonder at. So Peter isn't walking away from the tomb with a perplexed, puzzled, confused expression on his face. No. He's walking away with a face filled with admiration at the glorious works of God. He's not wondering what's happened. He's marveling at what has happened. He's realised what he knew himself deep down, what the centurion at the cross realised. This was, this is the Son of God. What are you doing here? The truth is known. And then lastly, what are you doing here? The Lord is risen. What are you doing here, the angels ask, all those who come to the tomb, and not from cruelty or from a belief that those who come are stupid or that they can't see, but in hope and faith and love they proclaim, he is risen. That wonderful message we need to hear. So don't look for him here, don't search in the tombs, don't hunt among the dead, the Lord is risen, go and follow him. Jesus isn't here not at the tomb because he's gone ahead of his people so they can find their place again behind him following him in this new life as in the old Jesus calls his people to follow him from death into life there is a poem by uh, Annie Johnson Flint some of us stay at the cross some of us wait at the tomb Quickened and raised with Christ, yet still lingering in the gloom. Some of us bide at the Passover feast, with Pentecost all unknown. The triumphs of grace in the heavenly place that our Lord has made his own. If the Christ who died had stopped at the cross, his work had been incomplete. If the Christ who was buried had stayed in the tomb, he had known only defeat. But the way of the cross never stops at the cross. 
and the way of the tomb leads on to victorious grace in the heavenly place where the risen Lord has gone. What are you doing here? The Lord is risen. So there it is, that question. What are you doing here? They ask. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. The battle is won. The truth is known. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, do not stay at the tomb. Follow Christ into new life. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you for this day of celebration, this day of praise, this day of thanksgiving, a day that changes the way that we think and act and live, a day that changes everything. Lord of life, hear our prayer. And so we pray now for our world, for change, for change in all those places where there is human need. We pray for the poor, the homeless, the sick and the hungry. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for all victims of war, and especially we hold Ukraine before you now. For those grieving loved ones, for those appalled at the horror, for those who've been wounded, for communities that are divided and torn apart. We pray for peace, the peace of a risen Lord. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for the sorrowful, the fearful, the troubled in heart and in mind. We pray for the oppressed, the persecuted, the imprisoned and the exploited. Lord of life, hear our prayer. And Lord, in the quiet, on this day of resurrection, we pray for those who need to know new life, new hope in their lives. In the quiet, we hold them before you. Living God, may the truth of Easter break into every heart, into every place, bringing help and healing, strength and support, comfort and courage, hope and help, faith and freedom, love and life, all through your risen life. And may we, your people, be ever transformed by Easter. In the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>